I don't even know where to start. But let's start with what happened in the combine over the weekend. Um, I'm never, I've never been a combine person. I don't care about nobody running a straight line, a 40 yard dash, and straight line. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care about your my running back jump, make it, see how high he could jump and jump vertically. I want you to go horizontal. I don't care about none of that. But anyway, what showed off and what in, in, what impressed me. It should inspire a lot of people with what happened with Shaquem Griffin, the linebacker from uh, University of Central Florida. If y'all don't know about this this brother, uh, he has a twin. Him and his twin was born. Twin came out all right. And Shaquem, well, his brother, Shaquille, plays for, he's a, I think he's the cornerback for the Seattle Seahawks. But Shaquem had a condition when he was born. I can't remember the name. Where his, the umbilical cord wrapped around, I think his hand or his arm, and stopped, uh, stunted the growth of his fingers. So he was born without his fingers uh, fully developing. Evidently, it hurt him to the point where, when he was four years old. His mother came in the kitchen, found found him with a butcher knife about to cut off his fingers because it was that painful. Next day, they amputated his hand. Fast forward to uh, college, UCF, he's he, he's jamming, right? He's He won uh, a lot of awards, especially his last year. He didn't play his freshman and sophomore year because of people saying that you need two hands. They didn't give him a chance, but they finally gave him a chance. He blew up. Let's fast forward to the combine comes to the combine he expect he you know he did everything he goes to the bench press expecting to do six reps he ends up doing 20 reps at 225 pounds with a prosthesis a prosthetic rather mm -hmm. uh on his left hand oh yeah on his left arm then he do the 40 yard dash and runs a 438 which is faster than what Odell Beckham a wide receiver did and running back Ezekiel Elliott. So we got the one one arm, well, one hand man doing all this damage. Now they saying he's moving up from the seventh round to the fourth or third round in the draft. What you think about it? Do you think he should move up to the third or fourth uh, round? Do you who you think should pick him up? Now. That's a good question. Who who will pick him up? Anybody who pick him up, I think, will be taking a chance. And that's fine. You're taking a chance on people with, with two hands, you know. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, it's not like he, go out, he, he going out to play wide receiver. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you need your legs and you need your arms to make tackles. Right. You know, and you can hell, like, and I was telling somebody the other day, Hell, you got people with two hands and miss tackles. Mm -hmm. you know, so I definitely think I, I, I'm looking for him to go he draft maybe the second day. Okay. You know, the third, third, fourth round, whatever. But uh, I, I think he's definitely going to get drafted. And, and he seems to be the type of person was, you know, I don't care where I get drafted at. I, you know, I just give me, give me on the team and I'll take it from there. You know? Exactly. You know, that's that's the attitude that you know kind of displaying. So we'll see. Yeah, I agree with what you're saying. I think you know what? I'd be happy third or fourth round. I couldn't yeah. see him just sitting out there seventh round, but I think he's a third, fourth round. I can't say what team will take a chance with him, but I can tell you this much. If if I was a GM, if he ain't gone by the third round, I had to scoop him up for the fourth round just for the simple fact he will inspire his teammates because he out there just trying to get it. He's trying to prove it. He's sure himself. I seen him when he played at U. I mean UCF, UCFS. UCF went undefeated last year. They already crowned themselves. They they crowned themselves national champions. Don't care what anybody else say. But with that being said, 
I think he's he's an inspiration on that field. He's gonna give you gonna give you his all, and I think that's gonna trickle down to the other players, other defensive players, let alone the offensive players, to do their best. So I just put him on that. I'm not asking, yeah, I understand. He looked good with catching. But I understand he might have difficulties catching interception stuff because of the one hand. But mm. I think he's more productive on the field to inspire the other players than the interception. So, okay, if I'm lacking interceptions from him, that's cool. I'm, I can live with that. But for him to inspire the, or, or kick up a notch the other 10 players on defense, I think he's a short shot. You know what I'm right. saying? He might have difficulties uh, tackling people. Everybody, you know, everybody throwing their little shots saying, okay, can you do this? Can you do that? Well, hell, uh, uh, New York Giants uh, defensive end. Um, one of the blew off his hands. I blew off his fingers there. Yeah. Um, he got one hand, basically. He got one hand. He doing the damn thing. So he's going to come to me with his name. is Jay. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah, yeah, I mean, linebackers and defensive linemen, you've seen, you know, the play with cast over. Exactly. Like, right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> so, yeah. Hopefully, it's, I'm, I'm going to look to see where he's going to go because that's one of the – when the diamonds in the rough, I believe, in the NFL draft this this year. All right, man, moving on. Speaking of draft, just heard <laughs> this morning. I think it came out yesterday, but I heard this morning. I don't want to butcher up his last name. LSU running back, Darius Grease. I'm just going to call it that. Told reporters that he was asked from a team if he liked men <laughs> at the scouting combine. Problem with that is there's a rule now. Two years ago, Eli Apple was asked the same question from the Atlanta Falcons. I guess now there's a rule now that you can't ask players or people at the combine questions, uh, questioning their sexuality. If you do, um, there would be discipline from the NFL. So I, evidently he didn't give up the name. I've heard people say, asking him, I think Michelle Roberts from the NBA, from the NBA's, uh, uh, union said that you need to find out what team said this and uh, spend it from the combines next season. But all that said and done, it's a rule. It shouldn't have been asked what you think about this. You think they need to find out who it is? And then no uh, one come to the running back and say, all right, you got to tell us who this is so could we get, so we can lay down <laughs> the hammer and make sure this doesn't happen again. Do you think he, they need to find out who it is or just leave it alone and warn other warn the team to once again? You can't ask them questions. Uh, yeah, I think they're just going to warn them. I don't think they're going to do nothing this, this time. I, one, I don't think he's going to say anything. Right. Whoever it was. Right. So they, they won't even know. But they will often put that warning out there. Okay. You know, to make sure that it's, it's received, you know, throughout the league or whatever. Because it, it don't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, you know? Right. right. Okay. Gotcha.